everyone, welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. It is clear now, it has been a pro-incumbency verdict that the nation received at the end of this Lok Sabha election. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has once again been elected leader of the NDA. 353 member NDA members in the Central Hall of Parliament elected him as the leader. The Northeast, too, is in line with the mood in the country. If the Northeast is any different, that would have been only surprising. Yes, the Northeast, uh, in the Northeast, the BJP and its allies have backed 17 of the region's 25 Lok Sabha seats. In Assam, the state with the highest number of Lok Sabha seats in the region, 14 in all, the BJP won 9 of the 10 seats it contested. The party has won both seats in Tripura and Arunachal Pradesh. In the rest of the northeastern states, either the BJP or its, or on its own or its allies have managed wins. Then again, in Arunachal Pradesh that had witnessed simultaneous elections to the 60-member state assembly, the BJP has romped home with a comfortable majority. The only state in the northeast that saw anti-incumbency pulling down the government was in Sikkim, where the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha managed to unseat the ruling Sikkim Democratic Front from power after a 25-year free run. SDF top gun Pawan Chamling's near undisputed status as the unchallenged leader of Sikkim got shattered. And yes, the only key BJP ally that got rejected was the AGP in Assam. It had contested three seats in Assam but drew a blank. Now, several questions arise. Is it only the case of the Modi wave or the Modi magic that has been sweeping the Northeast like the rest of the country? The Northeast has a vast Christian population and if allegations that the BJP polarizes people on the basis of Hindus and non-Hindus, then why are people accepting the BJP and its regional allies in the Northeast? Is it the development magic highways Waterways and infoway, in the words of Mr. Narendra Modi, that is drawing the BJP closer to the people in the otherwise industrially backward Northeast. Many would still ask, even today, where are the jobs and where are the industries coming up in the Northeast? But does this matter? Because everyone might just be happy with the strong personality of Mr. Narendra Modi. To discuss all these and more, I am joined from New Delhi by senior BJP leader and Assam minister Chandra Mohan Patwari. In Shillong, I have well-known civil society leader and commentator Toki Bla. I am joined from Imphal by the editor of Impact TV, Rupa Chandra, a well-known commentator. In Aizol, I have Adam Saprin Sangha, a political analyst. From Gang Talk, I am joined by Bikas Basnet, Spokesman of the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha, which has won the assembly polls in Sikkim, defeating the SDF that was in power for 25 years. From Agatala, I am joined by Professor Gautam Chakma of Tripura University. And at our, at our studios in Guwahati, I have Congress leader Kirib Chalia, former MP, and Dr. Nonigopal Mohanta, a reader at Guwahati University and a very well-known political commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to this special edition of Notice tonight. Uh, I would like to begin with Bikas Bosnet in Gang Talk. Bikas Bosnet is making his debut on Notice Live. Uh, Bikas, welcome. Uh, I would like to acknowledge Northeast TV for. Yes, thank you, thank you, Bikas. Uh, uh, Bikas, Bikas Bosnet, Bikas Bosnet, welcome. Bikas Bosnet is the sp spokesperson of the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha. Uh, because Basnet, uh, you have created history. If no, Mr. Narendra Modi has created history in the entire country, which we have been discussing for the last uh, 48 hours, in Sikkim, it is your party, the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha, that has created history by unseating, defeating the SDF that had a free run for 25 years. How did you do it? Because. Uh, first of all, first of all, I would like to congratulate. Prime Minister Narendra Modi for this uh, great victory, uh, getting the clean sweep from the country because of his leadership and dedication, BJP managed to get this seat, as well as in Sikkim, to overroot 
24 years of SDF party was tough, tough job. But what we did was, uh, because of dedication and hard work of our karyakartas as well as dedication of our party leader, we managed to get this victory. We managed to get 17 out of 32 seats. We have created history, and we want to congratulate each and every one uh, of the Sikkimese right. people. But how did you do it? How was it possible? Very quickly, how was it possible for the SKM to win this mandate? Uh, maybe, maybe this was anti-income factor, which created this victory. Uh, it was started back in 2009 when P.S. Gole started open revolution against dictatorial setup of Sikkim Democratic Front. Okay. So as a result, pe people give a full mandate to Sikkim Krantikari Morcha Party and we will serve the people of Sikkim. All right. Uh, hold your thoughts because I'll come back to you. We have a wide array of panelists because this light has to be fixed. Uh, okay, I will quickly go uh, to to Mr. Tokibla in Shillong. Mr. Tokibla is a very leading civil society leader and a well-known commentator. Mr. Tokibla, you know, it's the Modi magic. Do you agree that the Modi magic is behind the victory of the BJP and its allies in the entire Northeast? Out of 25 seats, BJP and its alliance partners have won 17 seats. That is a fantastic performance, Mr. Tokibla. Yes, Vasi, I do agree with you. It is a fantastic phenomenon and a fantastic win with the BJP has managed all over the country. And uh, as you said, it is, the, it is the Modi magic. One thing we should accept also is the way that uh, the BJP managed its campaign. In a parliamentary... Um, elections. They fought it on a, on a presidential mode. The focus was on Modi, the person, rather than the party. The party came second. And here is where people, the, the country needed a strong leader. And they saw in Modi that, that leadership which they were anxious for. So I see this is the, <coughs> the Modi magic which you're talking about. And the BJP was able to capture the mood of the nation where they wanted a strong leader, they wanted security for the country, they wanted uh, someone to defend the country, nationalism was there, it was the vanguard of the campaign. So all these factors combined to, uh, to bring the BJP to it and the NDA. To Absolutely. This fantastic uh, doc, hold, on, hold your thoughts, Tokibla. Uh, Dr. Nonigopal Mohanto, uh, you know, Mr. Tokibla has made a very, very valid point. All the ingredients were there. There was, a, there, there was this strong leader in Narendra Modi, they campaigned on that. It was, it was, he was the only mascot, the party came second. There was nationalistic forward, there was the spirit of nationalism that was sweeping the country. So all the key qualities, and he had modeled, according to Toki Bla, he had modeled the entire election on the lines of the American presidency. So uh, the Northeast was no different. 17 of the 25 seats going to uh, the, the BJP and its allies. How do you look at it? Let's focus our discussion on the Northeast. Well, Vasbir, um, those points are, you know, uh, valid throughout the country. You know, Modito, I call it Modito, where, you know, Hindutto, development plan, nationalism, Balakot, security, all these, these things de definitely fit into it. But when you come to Northeast, these factors are certainly valid points. But apart from that, we must not forget certain things. That is the transformation of BJP that has been happening in some recent years or we may say for last eight, nine years. If you look at the BJP's transformation, this BJP in Northeast is different, which is known as, as Hindu Hindu Party from, 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 from the central India. Yeah. When they operationalize in Northeast India, they adopted certain strategy and that strategy being, you know, uh, coalition building with the regional network, what I used to call it regionalization BJP that took place long time. Then along with it, if you cannot build a coalition, then try to complement them right. the way it had happened with NPP. Yes. And if you cannot complement, try to find a place for yourself. That had happened in Tripura, that had happened in, in Arunachal Pradesh. So I would call coalition building, complement them and contest wherever so, necessary. So and most important, all these three criteria, the BJP very well strategized 
and actually fulfilled. Nonigupal Mohanter, uh, very important opening remarks uh, by Dr. Nonigupal Mohanter there. I'll come back to Noni for to elaborate on what he said. I'll come to you also, Mr. Kirip Chalia. But let me very quickly uh, go to Mr. Chandramohan Patwari. Uh, if Chandramohan Patwari is there, yes, uh, Mr. Chandramohan Patwari, uh, senior cabinet minister, top BJP leader, uh, Mr. Chandramohan Patwari, now you see only at this point in time, the, in the central, the slight little while ago, in the central hall of parliament, 353 NDA MPs, uh, 303 of them, uh, of the BJP alone, your party, they have elected Narendra Modi unanimously as their leader. My question to you, let us focus our discussion to Northeast. A lot of people used to say that BJP is, is a, is a, is believes only in its Hindutva ideology. How will it fare in the Northeastern region where several states are Christian majority? Now, your party and its allies, alliance partners have done fabulously well in the Northeast. Um, as a BJP leader, Mr. Patwari, how do you explain that? See, uh, it's not true that on Hindutva, actually people vote in Northeastern region because North Northeastern region have been neglect neglected since long. Only after Narendra Modi came to the power in la during last uh, last last five years, so all all sorts of development, including roads and other development. Uh, taken place in every sectors uh, of North northeastern region. So, in northeastern region, um, uh, states like uh, uh, Tripura, states like uh, Meghalaya, states like Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Naga Naga Nagaland, Mizoram, they that, vote in favor uh, of uh, yeah. ND NDA and BJP. Yes. So, this is this is this is for development only. Bigger. People people vote for development. Yeah, like Mr. Patwari, this, uh, I'll yes. come to you. There's a beautiful, beautiful live images of the North Block and South Block, the entire Rizana Hills, the seat of power in New Delhi, in a festival-like atmosphere, heralding uh, the Modi's return, the Modi's second coming. That is beautifully lit. Fantastic view there. I think it's a breathtaking view uh, this uh, evening in the, at the Raisina Hills in New Delhi, the seat of power, North Block and South Block. Uh, the parliament is not far away, just in the vicinity. And in the central hall, everybody elected Narendra Modi as the leader. I'm coming back to you, Mr. Patwari. Yes, uh, you were talking about the, the yeah. demographic composition, the religious composition of the Northeast. Yet, your party was accepted very well in the Northeast. We can go back. We can go back to our panel. Yes, Mr. Patwari. We can stay with those visuals. Yes, yes Mr. Patwari. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Actually, people people vote people vote for development, and every community of the of northeastern northeastern region accepted our party party and party ideology and the developmental agenda and the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi ji. Right. I'll come back to you, Mr. Patwari. Let me quickly go to Mr. Uh, I'm coming. I'm having the opening remarks from everybody. Then we'll open the debate. Uh, very quickly to you, uh, Rupa Chandra from Manipur. How do you see, uh, you know, a Congress mukt northeast? It is almost becoming a reality because in Manipur, not a single Congress uh, out of the two. One went to the BJP, other to the NPF. I think Rupa's line has dropped. Let me ask this to Adam Sapring Sangha in uh, Aizol. Uh, Adam, you have been closely watching the elections in the entire country as well as Mizoram. The question is that, you know, out of 17, uh, out of 25 seats, BJP and its allies have won 17 seats. MNF is also an ally of the NDA. Now, the question is, uh, you know, uh, in states like Nagaland, where there is more than 90% Christian population in states like Arunachal Pradesh, in states like Meghalaya, the BJP and its allies have been absolutely accepted. Yes, that's, that's uh, if you look at those statistics, it might seem quite surprising what's here. And uh, what's interesting, I mean, from my home state of Mizoram is that uh, the Mizo National Front is, uh, has stormed to power in the state assembly last year. The, their candidate has won in the parliamentary elections, uh, which was declared last week. 
And uh, what's interesting is that these regional parties are allies of the BJP nonetheless, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, as a notice as a whole, since the Congress has been in power for in most of the states for so long, I think there was a certain amount of complacency which has set in in most of the uh, state units. And that was certainly the case in Mizoram as well. And that's why they were voted out of power. Okay. Uh, so these uh, regional uh, uh, parties uh, uh, are, I think, uh, besides the BJP. I have to also go to Professor uh, Gautam Chakma. I'm coming to you, Professor Gautam Chakma, but Rupa Chandra in Imphal. Uh, Rupa Chandra, religion does not seem to matter anymore. That religious card, the BJP was facing all this while, the allegation of this BJP, but that has been shattered now. BJP is seen by the people of India as a development-oriented party, and that is what is attracting the BJP across the nation, across the divide, including the Northeast. Do you agree with this assessment, Rupa Chandra? Well, if you, if you take a look at the entire notice, what you said is absolutely right. But the, the pattern of voting in Manipur is quite different, you know. Uh, you have the plains and the, the, the hills, where the plains is actually basically uh, majority Hindu and the Maitais. And in the hills, you find mostly Christians. So you still see that uh, the voting in the hills and the plains is going in a different way. You have one BJP from the uh, plain, but you see that the NPF has been able to hold a, a hill. So uh, the, the, uh, the religion factor that you have pulled in may be applicable to some places, but not necessarily all across the Northeast. But do you agree that development is the car? Development is what the people of India are looking at, and the no people of Northeast are no different? Yeah, uh, people across the country want development, but that yes. said, uh, there is also the, what do you call, uh, in case of Manipur, uh, what you can say that we have a tendency to go for uh, uh, political, uh, those yeah. who are in power. But For example, if you yes. see Congress come to power in yes. the center, yes. but, you will but, find but the whole of but Rupa Chandra, the valley must, vote swing towards also the remember power. We must also remember the fact that the NPF, as far as Manipur is concerned, is a coalition partner of the BJP. So NPF technically is also a part of the NDA. So that is also something which you have to factor in. In Nagaland, it may be a different story. Yeah. The NPF supported the Congress candidate. But in Manipur, uh, it ND, NPF is very much a part of the B, uh, BJP-led coalition. I am I'm elaborating on this debate. Professor Gautam Chakma in Agartala. Professor Gautam Chakma is head of the Department of Political Science in Tripura University. Uh, OK. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, 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 I'm coming to you, Professor uh, Gautam Chakma. Uh, but Mr. Kareep Chalia, uh, at the end of the day, Congress Muk Northeast. That was one of the slogans of the BJP. You see, the Congress Muk of Bharat was a slogan much, uh, much earlier. Uh, but in the last, uh, you know, it, it has almost becoming a reality, a Congress Muk Northeast. Because you must not forget the fact that till 2015, five to six states in the Northeast out of eight were ruled by the Congress. It was, in fact, considered a Congress bastion. So today, when you see the results, 17 of the 25 seats backed by the BJP and its allies, nine seats by the BJP in Assam, out of that, only 10 that it contested. So how do you look at this surge? If it is not for development, nothing worked. Because your party's campaign, oh, BJP is a divisive party. BJP is trying to polarize the people on religious lines and so on and so forth. But nobody gave any weightage to such kind of argument. Chokidar chor hai, it did not click. In fact, this negative campaign seems to have boomeranged on the Congress party. And Rahul Gandhi uh, uh, had to quit, at least offered to quit. And this whole drama created during the Congress Working Committee uh, uh, by Rahul Gandhi. And Sonia Gandhi apparently did not accept that. So uh, what is your take on this? I've asked you two questions, Northeast and Rahul Gandhi's drama. See, uh, at this point of time, when uh, BJP is having an, uh, <coughs> in a, in a, it's totally in a mood of celebration, and naturally, it was a highly deserved victory, I'll say, because winner takes it all. You, know, you, you win, uh, and the loser, Everything goes wrong in, in this case. So I, I, that's the other is Jo Jita way second. What I'm saying is, things went very right for the BJP and the NDA this time, and things didn't go 
very well, not only very well, it, it, got, it, went, it got complicated in many places for uh, Congress and the opposition. That, that right. is the sum of the story. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that... Come to the this North is, East. North, uh, in North East, in North East, you know, uh, I would not, uh, not take seriously these comments of Congress, Mukt, or uh, all these you know, temporary uh, political swipes. Because I think politics is far more serious than, you know, mm -hmm. phraseology. Okay. Uh, so why, I would say... Why, why, why is it that the BJP and the Salais clicked because, uh, so well in the Northeast? Because, uh, because, very, very short, because, briefly. Because I must say that BJP has been able to understand that, that Congress can't be taken lightly in Northeast. And it, it's a serious effort to dislodge it from uh, various states in power. Therefore, that, therefore, and, and that then, then they made, they, they made a strategy, they made a strategy mm -hmm. to, uh, to encourage most of the regional forces, okay. regional parties, give them all that is possible because even ideologically, it was very tough for uh, BJP, BJP to enter into certain states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me tell you, in fact, uh, I would say, I, I, I would dare to say now. But they did it. Uh, that, that, that they did it, but they have to treat very carefully. Absolutely. So BJP realized that Congress was a dominant force in the northeastern region and they took it seriously, this particular uh, uh, formidable uh, nature of the Congress party at some stage and therefore they allied with the regional parties. That is what is the Congress leader Kirip Chaliya is saying. I'm quickly going to Gautam Chakma and then I will open the debate. Uh, Professor Gautam Chakma, uh, you know, uh, why, why do you think, you know, the BJP uh, has been able to capture the imagination of the people in Tripura to this extent. First, the ouster of the left complete wiped out in the last assembly election and within a year and a half, the BJP created history by winning both the seats in Tripura. So what are the pull factors of the people towards the BJP as far as Tripura is concerned, according to you? Uh, actually, um you know, you know that, uh, you know, left uh, government ruled Tripura for a long time. Yes. And, uh, you know, there is one factor which is anti incumbency factor. And that played a great role here. You know, people have, uh, people have actually, you know, uh, shifted. You know, it's a, it's a sort of paradigm shift, you know, in Tripura that, you know, having, being ruled by the CPM for a long period of time and their misrule in the state is one of the reasons you know, why BJP has come sweepingly in the state of Tripura. And no. secondly, of course, the you know, poor people in Tripura, they, uh, they could not realize. In fact, you know, what the, the ideology of CPM is something, you know, uh, it was not. It was actually a non-lefty, uh, you know, non-communist uh, uh, sort of you know, role they have played. Yeah. Although they claim that they are uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, uh, supporters of uh, the poor people. Right. Mr. Gautam Sakma, a very important points you have made there. I'm coming back to you in a minute. But Mr. Chandramohan Patwari, uh, w what do you think are the three factors? You know, did you really expect such kind of a result, 353 nationally? Did you really expect to win nine of the ten seats that you contested in Assam? You contested only 9 seats out of 14. Uh, uh, sorry, you contested only 10 seats out of 14 and you managed to win 9. Was it expectation, up to your expectation, how could you manage to do such a spectacular performance? See, actually it was expected result. It is our expected result and we expected, actually uh, prob probably you know our, uh, our from our party side, our chief minister, our finance minister, Mr. Himanta Vishwa Sharma, me, and all the lead, all, all the all, all the leaders of BJP in Assam. So we we claim that out of ten, we will uh, win uh, ten, 10 seats. So this is ex expe uh, expected result actually. And in the nation wide also, in national scenario also, this 350 also is expected. Uh, yeah, but. Are because you surprised, Mr. Patwari? Yes, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patwari. Let me. I'm sorry to. Yes. Uh, were you surprised that yes. your both your allies, both your alliance partners, have been rejected by the people? AGP contested three seats, did not win a single seat, no. and your other ally, BPF, also did not win. So what went wrong? 
No, actually, you, you know, these uh, see, Borpeta seeds and Coliabor seeds and Dubri seeds. And, you know, these three seeds, you know, it is very d difficult, d difficult for our allies or uh, BJP also, because I have got experience, because I contested in uh, 2014 right. in Bar Barbeta Lok Sabha constituency. So I was lost, lost by 42,000 votes, actually, and uh, during, uh, in, in, in 2014 election. So th this is one. And secondly, you know, that our allies could not do well, it is not true. Because actually we are we are fight, we are we are fighting the election as and as NDA. So uh, my, from my experience, I would like so, to explain so, you. Yeah. Uh, so, just one, so, one, one so, second. so the moral so of the story. When, 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 the BJP, no, 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 no. BJP just, just, will just, not just, dump their allies. No, no, BJP will not no, dump no, no, their allies. No, no, no. BJP yes, will yes, stay yes, with yes. the allies, isn't yes. it? So just, just. Uh, Yes, BJP, yes, yes, yes. BJP will stay with the allies. And from my experience, I'd like to give an example. When I was a president of AZP, that time also we had UC alliance with uh, BJP. So BJP owned right. four seats and AZP owned only one seat. Okay. So that time, actually, right. it was someone criticized me that be, being the president, being the president, AZP only got one and BJP got four. Okay. So that time, now, it was our argument from AZP side. I was AZP president that NDA, NDA owned actually five right. seats. Okay. So this time also, you, you know, that we are win, we, winning nine seats. This is the victory of the NDA. Victory of the NDA. Uh, I, I will, and, I will and, go and, for a and, short and in, break. I'll go yes. for, I'll come back to Mr. Bikas Basnet, yes. Mr. Tokibla, and all our panelists, and we'll also stay when we come back with the visuals of the Central Hall of Parliament where uh, Mr. Narendra Modi was elected later by 353 NDA MPs. These are the visuals we are going to show after this very short break. Don't go away. Well, welcome back. I'll go straight to gang talk uh, to Bikas Basnet of the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha. Uh, Mr. Bikas Basnet, uh, you know, uh, last year, it, last year the BJP created history in the Northeast when it swept away the CPM government that was in power for 25 years in Tripura. This year, your party created history in the Northeast once again by sweeping away the SDF ruled by Mr. Pawan Chamling again for 24 years. Now, people would want to know now, uh, who is going to be the chief minister from the SKM party? Okay. Uh, yesterday night, we held a legislators meeting where the legislators meeting unanimously elected our leader chief minister for the chief ministerial candidate. He is none other our leader, Sriman P.S. Gole, and today we represented to Honorable Governor Ganga Prasad uh, claiming the government. And our chief minister will be P.S. Gole only. So that is the confirmation coming from the SKM. The chief minister is going to be Mr. P.S. Gole. Uh, he, that means he will have to contest elections but, within but six we are, months. We are yet to get confirmation from the governor's office. Yes. Yes, yes. We, you'll be contesting election within six months, uh, there will be the three by-elections, and maybe you will take one seat and you will re-contest and re-elect as an MLA. All right. So now tell me another thing uh, that people would like to also know, uh, what were the three important things that you did by which you managed to defeat the SDF? Because until some time ago, everybody thought that the SDF led by Pawan Chamling was absolutely invincible. They were a very strong force. Now, this year, there were a lot of, lot of things that have taken place. The, your party became absolutely rejuvenated and revamped. Another regional party was formed by football star, football icon, Bai Chung Bhutia's Hamro Sikkim. 
So there was an anti-SDF wave created. Was the creation of Hamro Sikkim also indirectly benefited you? No, uh, anti-incumbency was the major factor. And second was the dedication of our workers. We reached to each and every houses uh, through Gardaila Avian, which is door-to-door -door campaign. We, we okay, made just hold on. That is, to the people that is, that that is Mr. P. S. It is high time that we should on the, bring on the change. Screen. Yes. Yes, carry on. Carry on, because yeah. carry on. Yes. So, so, so we went to the each and every household of the Sikkim. Uh, we, we motivated people, saying that now it is high time that we need a change. Uh, because corruption level is at at at, it, at par level, and you know, like dictate, it was like dictator setup. So people desperately wanted the change. So SKM was the main option. Uh, so people openly voted for the SKM. So as a result, today we are in the power. Now another thing, uh, because that people would like to know, people not just in the northeast but across the country would like to know whether the SKM will be a part of the NDA. Uh, what is the status? What is going to be Mr. Gole's and your party's relations with the NDA and the BJP? Are you a part of the NDA? Yes, we are, we are the part of the NDA. Today only our one elected MP. From the entire state, we have only one MP, which was won by SKM party. Today, our MP went to Delhi and today participated in the NDA meeting. And without any condition, we supported NDA alliance. So there are three breaking points coming out, uh, viewers from Sikkim. Uh, one is that Mr. P.S. Gole has already staked claim with the governor. He is going to be the chief minister, that is the chief of the SKM. Mr. P.S. Gole is going to contest the elections uh, within six months in one of the three by-elections that he is going to contest. Then SKM is very much a part of the NDA and have given unconditional support to the NDA under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I'll come back to you because Basnet, hold on, don't go away. I'm coming back to you. Uh, let me let me take this discussion uh, to Mr. Tokibla in Shillong. Uh, Mr. Tokibla, how do you look in today's, you know, when the BJP is a national party in the 543 member parliament, they have on their own 300 plus seats which is absolutely a history being created. Now, where is the role? How do you see the role of regional parties in the Northeastern region? That is something which uh, everybody would like to apply their mind on. What is the role of the regional parties? Do you fear that the BJP will gulp the regional parties at some point or the other? Will they be able to maintain their identity? Look, as far as uh, the results are that have come out indicate. It seems the BJP is absolutely satisfied to keep things in the status quo. If they have allied with the uh, regional parties, they, they would like to keep it. I don't think there's, uh, there will be any effort from the part of the BJP to overthrow these, these, uh, these parties. But then, you know, uh, after all said and done about these elections, these elections are now part of history. They're history. Victory has been... People Lost people have won. Right. What I'm more interested in is in the future of the Northeast vis-a-vis -vis the governance pattern or the governance mode that the NDA will be giving to the Northeast. No, no, we no. We are looking at development. Yeah. For us, as a landlocked, as a landlocked uh, part of India, where is the vision for development of the Northeast? I think we've got to apply the strategy. The, the BJP has to apply its strategy for the development of the Northeast. Right. For uh, so long, but, but, the but, but let, me, let, me, let me bring in Mr. Patwari here. Uh, Mr. Tokibla, kindly hold on. Kindly hold on. Mr. Chandraman yeah. Patwari, you know, uh, in the last two major speeches given by Prime Minister Modi after, the, uh, after winning the elections, First, on the day of the victory and even today, he has harped on inclusiveness, moving ahead together, you know, with, because he has given the said that even if those people who are with us, those people who are not with us, we are now for everybody. That is the message which the Prime Minister has very clearly given, the message of inclusiveness. Now, do you think uh, that is one of the 
going to be one of the slogans. This is one step ahead. Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas 2, which is consolidating on that slogan. And uh, do you think that is going to unite the country? Yes, yes. That is, that is, the, right, that is the right way <coughs> to address the country people. And our Honorable uh, Prime Minister, he has addressed rightly the regarding inclusiveness because this is the only way. And, uh, because, uh, and uh, one thing we must remember this time, that our voters in the country as a whole, and not, uh, especially Northeastern region, so voters are very smart and very intelligent. They know uh, whom to vote. And it's actually the clear, uh, clear example Generally, election held in UPA, UP, UP, UP state, UP state, actually it based on religion, caste, creed. But this this time you have seen that uh, Maha, Godbandhan and other other caste, creed, actually people have thrown out and people vote for development actually. So right. this is because uh, pre previously Modi ji has given the statement that Sabka Sat Sabka Vikas. So this is this is inclusiveness. Yeah. No, so no. This time also uh, I will this I will come to I'll I'll come to Rupa this, Chandra this, this in Imphal. And, and, and it will it will it will it and yes yes yes. I I'm going to Rupa Chandra in Imphal, but before that, very quickly, Adam Saprin Sangha, Adam, uh, you know, uh, in states like Mizoram, Nagaland, uh, Mizoram, Nagaland, Meghalaya, uh, you know, even parts of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, all these states have a very, very large number of Christian population. So I'm asking, I'm taking the name of the religion, I'm taking the name of the community, uh, just for the sake of clarity only, not for any other reason. Uh, you know, do you think people are slowly beginning to act, beginning to realize that there is nothing to fear after all? The prime, we have a prime minister who has been repeatedly making in the last two speeches after the verdict on 23rd and even today, he has said that, you know, we are with those who supported us, we are also with those who did not support us. If we have to take India forward, we have to take with the entire people. The, the, the message of inclusiveness, do you think uh, that will create a lot of, uni that, that will come as a unifying message in the entire country, including the Christian dominated states in the Northeastern region? How do you look at it? I think uh, a lot of people are in awe of uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. Uh, you know, you talk to people and they always have this awe, they have this uh, uh, affection for him. But on the other hand, he will have to act on what he says. You know, people will be keeping a close eye right. on if those words translate into action. Very important point, Rupa Chandra. I'm coming to you, Nonigopal Mohanta. Rupa Chandra, uh, Adam has from Aizol has said a very important thing. We are all happy, everyone. He's saying that everyone is happy that a prime minister is talking about inclusiveness, but he has to translate his words into reality. He should not allow some fringe elements uh, to you know, create problems now and then. Uh, that, can, that has the potential to divide the country. So this is not by the BJP, uh, mainstream BJP, but there are fringe elements which always tries to create issues. So do you think, uh, uh, are, you, are you in one with what Adam has said? That is what Adam has said, basically. Yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely agree. Uh, but uh, you will also see that there's been a major change of uh, the situation uh, that existed in uh, 2014 to 2019. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of the Christian communities in the northeast had uh, actually uh, had apprehension of how BJP is going to take forward its Hindu uh, agenda, and BJP, if you notice, is playing a very uh, it's walking a very tight rope when it comes to the Northeast. When it yeah. is very is uh, easy for said. it yes. to play the Hindu card in the main, mainland India, when it comes to the Northeast, you will find that it's trying to latch on to the, uh, the, the local uh, or regional political parties to take ahead its agenda. Now, the, uh, now if you see, uh, uh, the gentleman from Aizol, he just brought across a very strong point where you see Narendra Modi as a leader who goes for an inclusive growth. You find most of his political members or party members are still stuck with the Hindu Tava issue very strongly. So uh, Modi has to play a very, very dicey role here uh, when it comes to trying to garner the support of the entire Northeast as well as the entire India. 
Because so, if you see in right. the notice also, you will find that the uh, the vote shares. If you find the vote shares, uh, uh, it doesn't really translate into uh, full support. I'm I'm I'll be I'll be going to Mr. Tokibla and Professor Gautam Chakma, but Dr. Nonigopal Mohanto. Uh, uh, that is what uh, 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 the editor of the Impact TV, Rupa Chandra from Imphal, is saying that, you know, uh, you have to play a very tightrope. Tight, it's really a tightrope walk for the BJP in the northeastern region. Uh, I also have a Congress, on, I also have a question on what the Congress is going to do now, but that's, that I'll come a little later. But what kind of a strategy, because what new strategy is not necessary because the BJP is already clicked in the northeastern region with the development mantra. Yeah. So um, you don't have to really play a religion card at all uh, because your development strategy has clicked and given you rich dividends in the Northeast. That is what the people want here. Actually, BJP doesn't adopt one mega macro plan for the region. They have very state specific and community specific strategy. Of course, you know, because our development is the main mantra, particularly. Northeast is becoming the hub of India's foreign policy in the days to come, particularly after the decline of SARC, you know, with the launching of active policy, although the pace is not uh, the, what we expected, but nevertheless, uh, and BIMSTEC, BCIM, these yeah. are some of the actually initiatives which have taken place. And in recent times, there are some infrastructural developmental projects which have really taken off. Right. And on top of that, actually, all the Congress has uh, initiated many projects, but it is during BJP that many communication, particularly bridges in Upper that Assam. Took these projects to the logical end, logical that all these end. things, that push was there. Uh, Professor Gautam Chakma, you know, everybody thought, I'm coming to you, Mr. Patwari. Uh, Mr. Professor Gautam Chakma, you know, a lot of people in the Northeastern region thought that BJP will face the brunt of the people in the Northeast because of the Citizenship Amendment Bill. Many thought that BJP's performance will take a hit uh, because of the CAB. But CAB did not have any impact at all. Professor Gautam Chakma, many, everybody thought that BJP will yeah. suffer because of the Citizenship Amendment Bill. But that CAB issue did not have any impact on the BJP in the Northeast. Nobody bothered about the CAB actually. Professor Chakma, I'm can not, you hear me? Clearly, uh, now I can hear you. Yes, my question yeah, is... Now very, I can hear you. Yeah, my question is simple. Lot of people thought that BJP is going to suffer adversely because of its decision to amend the Citizenship Amendment Bill. But CAB issue did not have any impact on the BJP's results in the Northeast. Why do you think so? Why did it not have any impact? Um, I think the issue, issues are somewhere else. One issue is that in Tripura, for example, you know, the uh, rights of the indigenous people, development of the indigenous people, and the, you know, uh, the relationship between indigenous people and non-indigenous you know, non people, these are issues, some of the issues actually, which has overtaken the NRC issue. And also on the other side, you know, political parties, they had, you know, uh, an agenda like, you know, Tuiperland, and Tuiperland issue actually uh, overshadowed the question of NRC in Tripura. This is some of the reasons, you know, in Tripura we didn't have the impact of that. Right, then, then this brings me to the question, I have to go to Mr. Kreep Chalia. Where is the Congress today? Right. Yesterday, your party president in Assam uh, was a very, very, you know, he took a very, very defiant posture. He said in 2014, he was uh, uh, almost trying to take credit uh, uh, himself. In 2014, when we had the, our own government in Assam, we had the, our own government in uh, Delhi, then the Congress won three seats uh, in the Lok Sabha elections. Today also, when we have no government, either in the state or at the center, we own three seats. So our position is intact. So, but where is the Congress, except for one seat, Vincent Pala, which also perhaps would have gone to the opposition had the BJP not decided to field a candidate uh, against their own uh, common candidate. So there's only three plus one, only four in the Northeast, which was once a bastion. What has happened to the Congress in the Northeast, Krip Chalia? So let me make it very clear uh, that uh, the, the victory in the, uh, of the BJP in Northeast was a very well well, 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 Talk about the very Congress. Well thought out. Uh, yeah, strategy. that we know. Talk about now, the Congress, now, please. When, Your when, party. When, when, when I'm saying that, I'm saying that 
the, the, the Congress uh, performance was quite antithesis of all that. Right. Uh, it was a very confused kind of uh, election machinery. It was, uh, it could not, uh, it misread most of the issues. Uh, it was mismanaged, I would say miscalculated. There were all kinds of allegations. And I think even the managers, the party managers, uh, were, were not very highly competent people. Whereas, uh, uh, and they couldn't, do, they couldn't, they couldn't, you know, uh, enthuse the people from, uh, from the setbacks that were, they were facing for the last two, two, and a, two and a half years since uh, uh, BJP's advent. Uh, in fact, it was surprised to know there were even, even allegations. Uh, you must, be see, you must have seen the shocking allegations that in many, uh, in, in Assam, for example, that candidates were selected uh, because of some secret understanding with uh, the powers to be. Uh, in, uh, in Assam. So this kind of things, you know, there's a very horrifying kind oh, of allegation. Oh, specific. And, oh, and okay, to why, why don't sec, you miss, which are the powers that the BJP? Can I, can are, I are, can are, are, you, are, you, are you saying Kirip Chalia, you have to be very clear to my viewers, I'm going to take responses from all my panelists on this discussion. There's a very sensational allegation leveled by Mr. Kirip Chalia uh, of the Congress, former MP, he's saying that Congress party, first of all, he's saying that it has a confused campaign. This is a very strong admission by the Congress that the campaign was absolutely confused. Uh, and then he's saying that his own party must have, may have selected candidates in consultation with the BJP. Is that what you're saying, no, Kirip Chalia? I'm not saying it. I'm, I said there are allegations which has come out and it has come but out in you, the press. But you obviously come believe out those press. allegations, no. otherwise you would not have repeated no. it on my channel. No, 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 no. I don't think so. I don't think there is any, you know, uh, any uh, ban on my, on my speeches that not to uh, allude to any newspaper reports or to the, to the not allegations, at all. Go allegations ahead. by very Go responsible ahead. people. But we need clarity. Now, these were all responsible people. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I said, I am not making this allegation. My, my, my sentences was very clear that uh, mm -hmm. there are allegations. I didn't right. say I allege. So, no. so kindly now, uh, leave me from now, the pain. Now, now, now I'll come to the second stage, second, second question. Yeah. Very quickly. I would say, I would say that uh, in Assam and for that matter in Tripura, mm -hmm. uh, BJP, worked, BJP, BJP worked very hard to impose its ideology, spread its ide ideology, and also the strength in its organization. Assam, BJP worked very hard. Assam and, uh, Assam and Tripura. You know, you have, you have seen uh, Mr. Himanta Bishra Sharma doing nearly 200 rallies. Not, not he, only Himanta Bishra Sharma, Sharma I'd say even, I'd say, I mean, I'd say Chief even Patwari Minister and even Sonwal, uh, Mr. Sarvanam, Sarvanam, everybody worked very hard. Everyone, the entire BJP leadership in the And, 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 and the lower level cadres also. Yes, yes, absolutely. Without I, the lower level cadres. I must give them the credit. I mean, there's no denying that fact. I'm coming to you, Mr. Patwari, for your direct response to this. But Mr. Tokibla, uh, you know, uh, the Congress campaign, one of the Congress leaders on my panel is saying a very interesting thing that the Congress campaign was absolutely confused. Uh, Mr. Tokibla, are you there? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tokibla, the Congress campaign was absolutely confused. And today, once every time there is a debacle, Rahul Gandhi will attend the CWC meeting. He will offer to resign. Uh, the CWC members will tell him not to resign. And, and uh, this whole drama is unfolding, unfolding every year or every six months after every election. Tokibla. Yes, I, yeah, I totally agree with Mrs. Chalia. There seems to be a t total confusion amongst the, the ranks of the Congress, except for Meghala, where they won because of various other factors. There was this, the fear for the CAB and because of the non-performance, the inability of the common candidate and the regional parties to manage their campaign. But, you know, there is this whole issue of the Congress parachuting their leaders into the region and also of not having ground, ground workers. They lack that. That is where the BJP took advantage. Uh, we could clearly see that. Right. Uh, Mr. Chandraman Patwari, uh, were you pleasantly surprised at the statement of Mr. Kirib Chalia, uh, who is still officially with the Congress party? He is saying that, you know, the Congress campaign was absolutely confused. Uh, but his second part, he has made a sensational uh, uh, statement, quoting newspapers, that Congress may have selected candidates in consultation with the BJP. Now, what do you think of uh, these two things? One. Congress campaign was confused. That is what Kirip Chalia is saying. We are not saying. 
uh, and second part is the other one. See, uh, Kirip Salia, uh, he, uh, what, what, what statement he made that uh, Congress campaign was confused, confused in a sense. So one, on what basis Congress will uh, campaign aggressively? Because during their uh, government period, during their government, uh, when um, government was in the center, government was in the state, so what development, developmental agenda they took for the people of Assam and Northeastern region. So aggressive, uh, we, BJP campaign aggressively because during last five years, Sapka Sat, Sapka because this mantra actually click and in fact we have done also in this way. And that's why our, uh, our, 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 our campaign was aggressive campaign, campaign uh, uh, aggressive campaign in a sense that uh, there are lots of development that development took place in Assam and Northeastern region also. And secondly, one most important thing, our Prime Minister, the day result was out, result declared, that day in party office our Prime Minister uh, clearly mentioned that right from the national president to the Prista, Prista Pramukh. Yes. So he, he extended said that. his thanks to up to Prista Pramukh. Means, means at the grassroots level also our party workers, everyone was doing very hard work, very sincere work. And we could approach people because we have done something for the people. In the last uh, five years, it was a miraculous development in every sectors, in every sectors. That's why we could, we could approach people aggressively also we can right. we can we could campaign Absolutely. aggressively also and Absolutely. congress could not to could not campaign aggressively Absolutely. because they have no agenda at all because from my experience from my experience i said suppose in health sector i was also health minister in 1985 1999 period so that that time you see one ct scan machine was a dream for us dream for assam it was a dream one ct scan machine for assam it was a dream but now you see in the whole state of Assam, in, up in civil hospital, district of civil, civil hospital, you have seen that there, there are cities can in every civil, civil hospital. Absolutely. So Absolutely. See, Mr. Patwari, hold on your thoughts. Mr. Patwari, hold on your thoughts. I'll go for a quick two-minute break. When I come back, I'll go to Rupa Chandra in Manipur, in Imphal, Bikas Basnet in Gang Talk, and to all other panelists, including those in the studio. Don't go away. Welcome back. I'm, I'll, I'll quickly go to uh, Mr. Adam in uh, Ita, in Aizol. Uh, Adam, you know, I mean, a lot of people are not. I was, I was briefly asking this question: Is there any fear among the regional parties? Uh, I know in Mizoram, the MNF is a very large regional party as far as Mizoram is concerned. So that's a different story. I'm asking you this question in the broader northeastern context, not just in the context of Mizoram. Now, my question is, a uh, lot of people are saying that BJP at the end of the day uh, uh, will, will uh, may co-opt, try to co-opt the regional parties and even gulp them. So, so do you think now they have reasonably demonstrated that that is not going to happen and therefore, in the second term of the NDA, the regional parties will be more comfortable with the BJP. Well, there is, uh, the, there was, I mean, taking Mizoram I'll, as an example again, uh, uh, was beer. What the BJP has done, although the MNF is part of the NDA, like you pointed out earlier, uh, they have given a lot of free reign to the MNF leadership to put the candidates that they wanted to contest, the seats that they want, uh, you know, to have this uh, uh, entire campaign the way that they want, right? But in the end, the BJP still uh, uh, wins. If, if an NDA partner wins in Mizoram, it doesn't matter if the BJP wins or not in Mizoram, their partner wins in Mizoram. So, you know, they've given them a lot of uh, uh, room to operate. 
so I think that will serve the BJP also in the long run. Right. Uh, in, no. in, in the entire <clears throat> Northeast. I think that's the way it's going to be. True. Uh, Mr. Rubachandra, uh, you know, now, see, this time, last time the BJP had won 282 seats. Even then they had the NDA allies. They had uh, their allies and this time also they, they stuck to their, their alliance partners. They, in fact, expanded. Now, <clears throat> now, do you think that, you know, now that they've got 303 of their own, you know, they actually don't need the allies, but Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other top leaders have been repeatedly saying that we are not going to desert our allies. That's what Mr. Chandramohan Patwari has said in the case of Assam, that even if the AGP has not won a single seat, even if the BPF had failed to win, they will keep their allies. Now, my question to you, Rupa Chandra, will the NDA, will the regional allies, will they lose their bargaining power? For example, the NPF is an ally in Manipur. The NPP is an ally in Manipur. Uh, so, do you think they, have, they are slowly going to lose their relevance in the national context? Uh, I think the Prime Minister has made it very clear in his speech that uh, the, the, it's, a, it's a time for the coalition. And he has categorically said that he's not going to uh, you know, break this coalition and he's going to take all of them along. Now, that said, that said the BJP, of course, would want would want the entire, uh, you know, uh, uh, regional political parties to become part of it. Yeah. But when it comes to the North East, it will make sense for the uh, BJP I'll... to give the regional political parties as it is. Right. Because uh... sometime it's going to run into ideological issues in the... Because if you see its ideological moorings in the entire, uh, I mean, heartland, and that's incompatible with what it's going to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, go in the notice because True. in the notice it is going for all these developmental issues. It has kept aside all these religious and nationalistic things beside. So, uh, in the future, it's going to come up against uh, this ideological uh, problem. Now, in Manipur itself, if you see the NPF, we don't know whether NPF is a part of India or not because, as uh, most recently, the NPF Manipur chapter. Uh, in fact, the uh, in fact the NPF from the Kohima they has threatened, threatened to withdraw to support from the BJP-led uh, Biran government. Yes, because it has accused the Biran government of not, you know, uh, meeting its commitment, not keeping its commitment right. to the NPF. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, I'll go to. I think the BJP will absolutely. be its its so regional lot political of things, parties. Lot of things to needs actually balance its ideological differences. True. Very true. I'm coming back to you. Uh, let me go to Bikas Basnet in Gangtok. Uh, because, uh, you know, because Basnet in Gangtok, yes, uh, uh, because you see, uh, same question to you. You are a regional political party. Uh, now, it's a small state like Sikkim where you have just one MP. Now, do you think, you know, uh, you, if you are not a part of the NDA, you would not have any bargaining power at all. Uh, how will you, because it is, now a lot of people are saying that regional parties in smaller states it is a must for them to support the ruling party which is in power in New Delhi. Is it, is it that or do you look at it differently? No, no, we look at uh, differently because uh, if you see the trend, prior election also there were process of alliance with BJP. But somehow we could not happen officially. But we have promised BJP that as soon as we come into the power, as soon as we get the seat, MP seat in the Sikkim, we will unconditionally support to the BJP. That was the promise made by our leader to uh, Amit Shah ji as well as Ram Madhav ji, Ram Madhav ji uh, in Delhi. That was prior to election. So it was like a, a pre-promise that, that will go that we will go that after poll, after getting the seats, we will be giving our MP seats to the NDA. All right. Let's have the Modi's central hall pictures in that visual section. Mr. Yes, Chandramohan yes. Patwari, uh, Mr. Chandramohan Patwari, uh, you know, that commitment, uh, what would you like to tell the regional parties today? What is your message to the regional parties today? What kind of a message would you like to give to the regional? I'm not talking only about Assam. I'm talking about the entire northeastern region. As a BJP leader, what is your message to the regional political parties? Because uh, under the leadership of Narendra Modi, the inclusive development. So, uh, 
example, for, for, on the basis of that, uh, you see, as in uh, I, I, I appeal all the regional parties to support NDA actually. This is my message to all the regional political parties, of, particularly northeastern region. Because northeastern region states, in spite of all our, you see, the resources and uh, our richness, so we were, we, we were left behind actually because of this Congress rule, Congress rule uh, in the past. So now, uh, right. Years, okay, I, I apologize uh, for that poor audio. I'm coming back to I'm coming back to you, Mr. Patwari. Very shortly, we are going to fix the audio. Uh, we are going to fix the audio with you. I'm going to come back to you in. Give me just one minute. Give me one minute. I'm going to come back to you. Fix your audio. Uh, now, uh, Professor Gautam Chakma. Uh, you know, Professor Gautam Chakma. You know, uh, the it is now 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 the BJP has spread in the entire northeast. Religion is no longer an issue. Do you think the BJP has a much bigger responsibility now? Because on the day of the victory, on 23rd, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi made a very, uh, very important thing that with fate, the people of India has reposed their fate on Prime Minister Modi and the BJP, with fate comes responsibility. And he has also talked about moving ahead together. That is what he has tweeted. And today also, he says that, he said that, you know, we are now elected by the people. We have to work for those who supported us. We have to also work for those people who do not, did not support us. Now, in the Northeastern context, in the context of the Northeast, Professor Chakma, how do you look at it? I think so. You know, I remember, you know, Prime Minister Modi said once, Northeast, Northeast is just, the, as per Feng Shui, Northeast is the, uh, I mean, uh, lucky corner for you know BJP because it has in fact started winning uh, from northeast so you know northeast northeast on the other side expected a lot from BJP because you know it is very uh, uh, inclusive in its policy and also it was declared by you know the center uh, many a times that uh, the, the policies which which are BJ, which BJP is following in fact, you know, will be benefiting each and every person in the okay. country. So in that sense, I think Northeast is also no, not a difference. So I think these policies will right. equally now, affect right. all the people in Northeast. Right. Now, now I'll start with Mr. Tokibla. I would start with Mr. Tokibla. Uh, you know, I would like all my panelists to give a message to the uh, new government under Prime Minister Narendra Modi. What are the three important things that you would like the Modi's second term as government to focus as far as Northeast is concerned. Is it enough to only talk about connectivity? Is it enough to talk about only the activist policy? What really does the Northeast need? I'd like to start with Mr. Toki Bla. Same question to all my panelists. Mr. Bla. Mr. Toki Bla, can you hear me? Uh, okay, I will, st I, will, I will go to Adam Saprin Sangha with the same question. Adam, what is your answer? Three top areas where the new government must focus. Adam. I think uh, the lines are very, very disturbed. Uh, what are the three? Uh, Professor Gautam Chakma, if you have heard my question, wh what is your prescription? Three areas where the new government of Prime Minister Modi must look at the Northeast. The same question to all my panelists. Which are the three top areas that you want the new government of Modi to look into? Okay, uh, given the you know uh, this uh, infrastructure infrastructure issues in Northeast, I think first uh, you know focus should be infrastructure development. Second would be, you know, employment. Unemployment is very, you know, uh, very acute problem in Northeast. And at the same time, of course, the aspirations of the people of Northeast are very high at this moment. Education, economy, and all these, you know, factors are very important. Okay, uh, Professor Gautam Chakma talks about infrastructure development, employment avenues creation, and addressing the aspirations of the people of the Northeast in the field of education etc. So if I may go to you, Mr. Tokibla now, uh, Mr. Tokibla, okay, 
okay uh, who are the people online then okay adam adam which are the three areas that you want the new government of narendra modi to look into okay adam's line is also also thing i why can't we fix this line scripturally yeah, what are what is your prescription see uh, i would expect uh, the bjp to share its uh, it's a hindu hindi chauvinist uh, chauvinist image so far as northeast is concerned also to see that they do have do they propagate about unitary uh, unitary government that so far as the northeast is concerned they must understand the basic need to think federally in think northeast. federally number one think mm -hmm. federally yes number okay. two number two proper representation of to the northeast uh, youths in employment in the central government institutions all over the country and also even in the private sector mm -hmm. so that you know the, the jobs are given to the northeast people and they are brought into the mainstream in and what is your third, what is your third uh, the third is wish list we must not play with the sentiments of the northeast by uh, no removing the special status that the northeastern states had please they have to restore the special status of the northeastern states so that they can you know come up and uh, recover from the backlogs they had historically and geographically okay i'd like to go to uh, go to professor chakman uh, professor chakman has already spoken uh, adam what is your wish list from three major wish list from the new government of prime minister modi as far as northeast talk in the northeast context what is the three areas that you want the new government to look into not just general specific areas Uh, I think first that uh, the uh, Prime Minister Modi acts out on what he has said recently uh, that he will take everyone along in his new government. Uh, that is, I think, very important for the Northeast and its diverse communities. Uh, second, I think that they can do uh, more for uh, in terms of better connectivity, which they have already done to a lot of extent. And being a landlocked state, that is something that we need. And I think we really need. Uh, uh more and better educational facilities in in northeast in many parts of northeast okay can uh, take everyone along especially in the diverse uh, region like the northeast connectivity better education let me take this question to mr chandramohan patwari uh, although you are from the same party but you are from you are a leader from the northeast uh, we you can also demand from your own party so which are the three areas you would expect your party government at the center under the leadership of mr modi to look into as far as northeast is concerned see uh, actually uh, if you are asking me three actually three specific demand for northeast it, it will it will not be fair because prime minister narendra modi the day he became prime minister he given his in his maiden speech on the uh, floor of the parliament he said that north eastern region will be the new engine of growth of the country number 1 number 2 he said that north eastern region is the asta lakshmi asta lakshmi he, he designated as asta yeah. lakshmi so during you see during last 5 years and he perform it and in in coming coming year, years also if you confine me in three wishes it will be very wrong because all around development will take place under his leadership it is 100% we are we are 100% confident for this and and uh, not only north eastern region whole country will uh, march forward towards development okay mr tokibla if you can hear the same same question to you mr tokibla three most important things that you want the new government of prime minister modi to focus on as far as north east is concerned I think uh, the strategy the campaign strategy for the elections has been brilliant now is the time to look forward can we have a vision for development for the northeast we have act east policy of mr modi can he make it work please for us it has been simply flying over our heads now is the time when we start looking at development secondly when we look at development can we look at the infrastructural development of the northeast 
not only of the physical uh, infrastructure, I mean, but even a social infrastructure, such as health and education. Look at Negrims, for example, in Meghalaya. We have Negrims. It's falling apart. Can, this, can the government of, of Mr. Modi please do something about this center of excellence for health? The third thing I think we need to have, to have is an outlet for us to the Bay of Bengal. Can we have tr transit access to the sea, to the ocean? For this landlocked area of ours, this is very important. I think Mr. Modi, with the excellent relationship he has with Bangladesh, he can open up this way for the development of the Northeast. I think these are three most important things that we need to look at. And I think we need a vision. A vision document for the Northeast is, uh, uh, is a must. For the a vision document for the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years ahead for the Northeast. Very, very clear-cut road ahead shown by Mr. Toki Bla, who is one of the most uh, uh, well-known thinkers that the Northeast have. We need more thinkers in the Northeastern region. That is what we at Northeast Live are trying to do. Bring out the voices from the entire Northeastern region and make sure that they reaches the corridors of power in New Delhi. Uh, Bikas Basnet, uh, same question to you. Three most important things which you expect the government of Prime Minister Modi to focus on uh, as far as uh, Northeast is concerned, including your state, Sikkim. Yes, firstly, uh, we have a confidence on the leadership of dynamic Narendra Modi ji, as well as we want to move along with Narendra Modi in the path of development. We want more development in Sikkim because our is border state uh, which is surrounded by three major countries. We are landlocked by the three major countries. So uh, what we want is we want major road connectivity. We want bigger roads in the Sikkim, as well as a recently inaugurated Pakim Airport, which, is, which has been shut down, which is non-functional. So that should be immediately opened up. And another thing is that financial system and social system and government is totally under this uh, recently gone government Pawan Chamling. It is totally collapsed. So what we want is that we want immediate inquiry of CBI in Sikkim because CBI is debarred right. in Sikkim. We want CBI in Sikkim so that 25 years of monopolism okay. as well as corrupt government should be investigated by Modi government. Okay. Uh, because uh, we hope that those things uh, take place. Uh, uh, but most important is uh, development of Sikkim and the Northeast as a whole. And uh, thank you very much for being on the program. I'm coming to Gang Talk soon and hopefully, uh, hopefully interview the new okay, chief you minister. So you new. We, we are waiting for you. We want. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. You are most welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, lastly, I would like to go. I'm running short of time. I'd like to go to uh, uh, my friend and colleague Rupa Chandra in Imphal. Rupa Chandra, your last words, what are the three most important things that you would want uh, the government of Mr. Modi second term as far as Northeast is concerned? What is your prescription? What is your wish list? Wasbir, uh, you cannot have development when you have uh, insurgencies. Your ticker is running a story that says that there's a massive ambush in Nagaland. Yes. Now, I want this new government, new India government, to settle the issue, all these insurgency <laughs> issues. I want it to bring all the insurgents, whether in Myanmar or in Bhutan or wherever, or Bangladesh, get them all together, settle it for once. Because with the law and order situation in the North is, bringing in development will be a huge challenge. That said, because this government <laughs> has put priority on development and northeast for last 60 to 70 years has been a very neglected area and it needs to fast track all the developmental work in the northeast connectivity is a huge issue even though manipur has been part of the nation for last 70 years it's only just recently that we have had you know all weather connectivity that even breaks down now now uh, the government of India is talking about ACIS policy. But if you go, the, go to the stretch from Imphal to More, uh, you'll see the kind of road situation, the road there is, then the kind of security present that hampers the, uh, the whole entire uh, trading. So I want this government <coughs> to 
ensure that the act is policy becomes you know operational as soon as possible absolutely that it doesn't take more time to implement the icp at at more the next is uh, uh, I, i wanted to focus on education because education is the only tool that can bring okay. all of us okay rupa chandra i am running absolutely i am so, running totally uh, thank you rupa chandra thank you so much uh, i am really apologize i am running absolutely short of time i'd like to thank all my panelists starting from mr chandra mohan patwari senior assam minister top bjp leader for staying on during this entire conversation because that is extremely important we want uh, leaders from the ruling party as well as the opposition mr kirip chalia was here and bikas basnet uh, a very young dynamic leader of the sikkim krantikari morcha and of course my very esteemed uh, panelist mr toki bla adam saprin sanga uh, and of course professor gautam chakma there earlier dr nanigopal mohanto uh, for being participating in this very very engaging discussion and bringing forward putting forward thoughts from the northeastern region we'll 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 continue with our endeavor to bring in different points of view from the entire northeast present it to the corridors of power in new delhi so that they can listen to the voice of the people of the northeast that is our only agenda and nothing else i would like to wish all the viewers thanks for being with us good night and goodbye